it always seems as if there's just one week out of the year in the college football world that the entire landscape gets flipped on its head. That there is just upset special after upset special after upset special. And we really haven't had it yet this year. Will it come this weekend? I don't know. But I do think there are some schools that should be on upset alert this weekend. And I think there's a lot of them, actually. So I've got six games that I think you should look for this weekend as a, like, hey, something might happen there. So be cognizant of these games. The first one, I think, might be the least likely but I think you got to factor in a couple of different things. Miami is at number four, Florida state. Florida state has done a pretty good job this year of taking care of business. They had the near miss against Boston college, but outside of that, it's been relatively smooth sailing for the Seminoles. Miami is certifiably not bad. They are not in the top 25, but they are six and three. And they, they have the ability to win big games. If Florida State overlooks Miami in the slightest, I don't think they will. But Miami has enough talent to beat them. Also, it's pretty much all Miami has to play for at this point. Like, you're going to go to a bowl game. It's probably not going to be a very good one. But you know what could cap off your 2023 season? It's torpedoing the chances for Florida State to make the college football playoff. And I know, like, there are people who believe that, like, you know, love is the strongest, uh, love is the strongest feeling, blah, blah, blah. If it is, like, revenge is a close second. People get motivated by hatred, pettiness, and revenge as much as they get motivated by love and unity and trust and all of those things. Is there enough hatred, pettiness, and revenge in Miami to beat Florida State and ruin their college football playoff chances? I think we'll see. I would say no. But don't be surprised if that kicks off the upset special week that completely readjusts the college football playoff rankings. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Then the second one, I think, is the most likely to happen. Rutgers at Iowa. Rutgers might be more talented than Iowa is. And I, Greg Shiano will pull out whatever stops, whatever tricks he needs to beat Iowa. And we'll talk about teams and their ability to outscore one another later on in today's episode. But you know what? It doesn't take a whole lot to outscore Iowa. And I think it's a tough spot to be in for Iowa's defense because essentially you have to be perfect because your offense is so dreadfully bad that you can't give up a big play here or there. You can't give up a special teams touchdown. You can't give up two you can't have two breakdowns that lead to touchdowns and your offense can't turn the ball over that leads to touchdowns either like Iowa I I hate the term complimentary football because I think it's just a buzzword that people don't really understand what it means but Iowa does not play complimentary football their offense puts their defense in bad situations a lot and it shows So you have to be perfect defensively if you're Iowa. And I think that's asking a lot for somebody in a unit to do week after week after week. I think it's likely that Rutgers beats Iowa on Saturday. And I don't, and there was a comment on the YouTube video, I think yesterday, yesterday that basically said like Rutgers would be ranked in the top 25 if they were an SEC school. And I'll push back on this, and the only reason I'll push back on this is, yes, that their two of their three losses 
are to two of the best teams in the country. The flip side is who have they beaten to propel them into the top 25? No, nobody really truthfully. And that's what I think is keeping them out of the college football playoff rankings. Are they six and three? Yes. Yes, they are. And on paper, and and not even on paper, that is a good record for Rutgers. They have a lot to be proud of. Like, I don't know what Greg Giano is really good at in life, but damn it, he is a good coach at Rutgers. Now their losses are to Michigan, Wisconsin, and Ohio State. Their wins are against Indiana, Michigan State, Wagner, Virginia Tech, Temple, and Northwestern. What about that list of six schools makes you think, yeah, hell yeah, that's one of the top 25 teams in the country. I don't think... I don't think they are one of the top 25 teams in the country. I think they could get some love if they move to seven and three with a win over Iowa. But there's a reason that the over under is, and this is like a recurring theme for Iowa. There's a reason the over under is historically low. And that's because neither one of these offenses is great, but Iowa has to be perfect off defensively to win every week. And I think that's just a tall ask at some points. So I, I, I will flat out take Rutgers to beat Iowa this weekend. The third game I've got on the list of six games that are likely to be upset specials is the exact opposite of Iowa and Rutgers, where you have to be perfect defensively. I think in this game, you have to be perfect offensively and it's USC at Oregon. USC ain't going to stop Oregon. And if Oregon can get a stop or two, like genuinely, I think this is one of those games where like USC has fallen out of the top 25. Lincoln Riley has had his teams in the top 25 the last 48 weeks of his career. And now they have nothing to lose. I would legitimately think about going into the game if I was Lincoln Riley of like, we are going to go for two every single time. Because... It is going to be a shootout. The chances that Oregon scores 50 on Saturday seem pretty high. Can USC score 51? And so in a a game where every point matters, like just go into the game. We are going to go for two every time. And if they score seven touchdowns and we score seven touchdowns and we can get more two-point conversions than they get one-point conversions, we're going to win. Because that would be admitting reality. You are not going to stop them. Because if you have a history of not stopping Cal and San Jose State, you're not going to stop Oregon on the road at Watson. So you might as well just admit that it's not going to go well for you defensively. And the faster that we can have the football back, the faster that we can score, and the more points we can score is our path to victory. It's not a pleasant path to victory. I can't imagine it's fun to game plan for that and be like, okay, so our defense sucks, right? So what we're going to do is like, that's not a fun spot to be in, but it is reality. It is where you sit right now. And so if they just say, bleep it, we got nothing to lose. Caleb, I want you to throw for eight touchdowns on Saturday, okay? You've got to be really smart with the football. I need you to complete about 80% of your passes. I need yards after the catch. I need explosive runs, and we have to have nine really positive plays that we feel good about in two-point conversion situations. That's the path to victory. Now, whether they'll take it or not, I don't know. But like Miami, USC can torpedo Oregon's college football playoff chances. I think it's a tall task to do on the road, but I think it's a good old-fashioned shootout, and that's the – I think the good old-fashioned shootout favors USC. Speaking of kind of good old-fashioned shootouts, Arizona is on the road at Colorado. Buffaloes have fallen off a little bit. Arizona getting a little bit of pub, number 21 in the country, and feeling really good about themselves. They played everybody tough this year. But does Colorado have one more in them? One more just little pinch of magic to get a win don't be surprised if the buffs pull one out on saturday and the kind of week-long infatuation with arizona ends i think that's a prime 
I guess it wasn't pun intended, but it might be pun intended. It's a prime opportunity for Colorado to get a win. Before we go to the last game, there are three games that I would love to put on upset alert. I just can't do it. Just can't do it. The first one is Michigan at Penn State. I would love to tell you that Michigan is susceptible to a loss at Penn State on Saturday. I just don't think it's likely. The way Penn State, it appeared, prepared for, came out and played against Ohio State gives me no faith that they'll do that they like last week, Greg Schiano was like, I'm going to pull out whatever bags of tricks I need to help Rutgers beat Ohio state. I don't think James Franklin is going to do that against Penn's against Michigan. I, I just don't, I don't foresee that happening so far this year. Michigan has played to its own standard. Now, whether you want to say that that is um, knowing the other team signs or signals enabled that's a different discussion. Nonetheless, the results on the field have shown Michigan has played to its own standard and nobody has been able to match that. And I don't think Penn State is able to match that either. So if the trend continues, I think Michigan wins that game by two touchdowns. But if th- th- that is Penn State's opportunity slash path to victory is that Michigan bucks the trend and they no longer play to their own standard. That is the only way that Penn State is able to get a win. And I don't see that happening. I would love to tell you that Kentucky has a shot against Alabama. They don't. Crimson Tide have a pretty weak end to this season where it's Kentucky, Chattanooga, and then Auburn before the SEC championship game. I don't think they're going to be tested before Jor, before Atlanta. I just don't <laughs> like I would I would love to tell you that Kentucky's going to give them fits. Alabama has turned around. We mentioned early in the season that Jalen Milrow was not going to be the answer at quarterback. I still don't know that I would go into next season like banking on him being the guy, but he's played significantly better and has done a really nice job with his legs. They have played to his strengths more recently and they're pretty entertaining and finally old miss is at georgia i don't know that there's a soul that thinks the rebs are going to beat georgia you're on the road and old miss has had like a multitude of opportunities to beat teams like georgia and alabama and lsu when they were top dogs and haven't really ever done it outside of that time Hugh Freeze did it, but then, you know, he crumbled. There's too much history to tell me to consider that Ole Miss is going to play with any touchdown of Georgia. I don't, I, I, it just, I can't do it. I would love to. I would love to tell you that that's a true top 10 matchup. I don't think Ole Miss is one of the 10 best teams in the country. And I think Ole Miss is the like line of demarcation of everybody in front of Ole Miss has a path to the college football playoff and everybody behind Ole Miss doesn't. I just don't think. I don't. I don't see Georgia slipping up there. I don't see Georgia slipping up at home necessarily. It just doesn't generally happen in college football. In the final game that I would. I would really watch on Saturday is Utah at Washington. Utah is in a spot offensively where they cannot outscore Washington. They, they, they can't get into the, like the USC Oregon game. USC is just like their game plan has to be. We have to score 70. Utah is not in that scenario. They cannot get in a foot race, a shootout, whatever with Washington, they have to get stops and have to play really well defensively. And like Florida state, like Oregon, Utah can torpedo Washington's college football playoff chances. Because right now being at number five as the fifth place undefeated team tells you that the committee does not have a whole lot of respect for Washington. And if they don't have a whole lot of respect for Washington, and they lose, I wouldn't expect them to still, like, I would expect 
number five Washington with a loss to drop to number eight Washington with Oregon and Alabama passing them by. Or in Oregon, Texas, and Alabama passing them by. I just, if you are number five undefeated, you are not going to be like, and that's where I think we go back to yesterday's episode of you talk about the kind of hypocrisy of like, okay, we're ranking teams based on resume, but then also head to head matters. So technically, Washington is ranked above Oregon, and technically, Texas is ranked above Alabama, but Alabama may have a better resume than Texas. Whatever. I'm here to tell you if you're number five undefeated, and you're the last of the undefeateds, it probably means you're not the top one loss team either. So Utah defensively can match up somewhat well with Washington. And I think this is either, this is one of those games that either finish like Washington wins 42 to 20 or Utah wins 24 to 17. Okay. I don't think there is, Utah cannot get in a shootout with Washington. If they can get some stops, force some turnovers, which has been somewhat difficult to do. Michael Penix Jr. has not been willy-nilly with the football this year. He's done a really nice job. But if you can pressure him, you can get a pick here or there, get a defensive or special teams touchdown, can go a really long way in winning that game. I don't. I wouldn't pick Utah to win many of these games, but in a one-to-one matchup on any given Saturday, I think they match up okay with Washington and they're going to try to ball control. They're going to try to slow the game down, limit Washington's possessions. I think it's a decent strategy to victory, whether it plays out that way. We'll chat about it on Sunday, but I just think Utah matches up somewhat well with Washington. And if they can get Washington to do And again, this is easier said than done. If you can get Washington to do some things they haven't done this year, turn the football over, be inefficient offensively, limit their big plays. I like Utah's chances, frankly. So those are the six games this week that I think those teams should be and maybe could more than should be on upset alert. But it has the the makings of one of those wild Saturdays where you get kind of deep into this season, you lose focus a little bit, you start looking ahead to the what ifs, and you lose track of what's happening in front of you, and it can derail your whole season. It seems like we're good for one of those a year and haven't really had one yet. We'll see if it happens on Saturday. We'll be back to recap the college football weekend on Sunday. Look forward to doing it here with you on the Daily Huddle on Saturday Glory. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content we're pumping out here at Saturday Glory. If you're listening on a podcast, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping us get in front of more college football fans. We'll be back at it on Sunday. I'll see you then here on the Daily Huddle on Saturday Glory.